Hey, boy. Radio Free Ensmith, episode 212, I believe. You may have noticed a pattern with episodes of late. Episode 208 was about Devaloof, Visual K Band. Episode 209, it's about Separation, Death Metal Band. Episode 210, it's about D, Visual K Band. And then last week's 211 was about Morpheus Descends, Death Metal Band. That means this week we are going to be doing a Visual K Band, but not just any Visual K Band. One of the most important and the wackiest of all the Visual K stuff I've heard. I saw them recommend by a couple people in the comments in some of the older episodes, and I was like, that sounds interesting, what is this? And they put it on, it's like, holy shit, this is amazing! So I've been listening to them pretty steadily for like the past few weeks, and uh, I gotta say they're one of my favorite, you know, recent discoveries. So thank you for uh, mentioning them. This week, we will be talking about Moi de Moi. That's right, the D-I-X there in the middle is not pronounced Dix. It's Dix, as in the French word for ten. So no more Moi Dix jokes, all right? Ah! The more esoterically inclined listeners out there might also recognize Dice, if you spell it with an S, as the name of, like, the big city in Dante's Inferno that houses the lower levels of hell. This correlation is not an accident, because all of this band's wacky name is steeped in all kinds of esoteric meaning like that. The nearest I can tell, in somewhat broken French, Moi de Moi translates to My Ten Months, which is kind of a weird name. What the hell does that mean? Well, think about it. You got a baby. How long does a baby take make? Nine months. Nine month pregnancy. Ten months is longer than that, implying that this is like a very long and very painful birth. And if you go into a lot of like the more Eastern esotericism, you got like the founder of uh, Taoism. Lao Tzu was said to have been inside his mom before he was born. 62 fucking years. So there's a lot of association with a longer than normal pregnancy resulting in some kind of like esoteric knowledge. And I got to think that's where he's getting the name from that and the Dece thing, implying that this is a very long and painful birthing process resulting in something that has a lot of esoteric significance to it and may not be easily understood by outsiders. I could be wrong though, that's just my interpretation of the name. But speaking of esotericism and names, Moi de Moi is the product of a guy named Mana. And to get into the long birth of Moi de Moi, we're really gonna have to look into who this guy is. Because he is pretty darn wacky, even for a visual K guy. Start off with, the dude never fucking talks. If he's getting interviewed, he'll lean over to like a bandmate, or if it's for like a fashion interview, one of the gals modeling the clothes as he designed, he'll whisper in their ear, they answer for him, or else he holds up yes and no cards, or he like pantomimes answers, or occasionally he just stares into the camera and subtitles mysteriously appear. And what this means, and not only is he like a really fascinating interview subject, but also he runs the best goddamn cooking channel on YouTube. Gothic King Cobra, pfft, you're out of here, cancelled. <laughs> Yuka Kenoshita, come on man, next. <laughs> Tomomi Morisaki, uh, okay, let's not get crazy here. I guess, you know, she, she could stick around for uh, reasons. But my man Manasama over here, greatest cooking channel on YouTube, funniest thing I've ever seen. Because not only does he have the crazy silent gimmick and the wacky outfits, but he also has a real sense of humor about it. Where, you know, he'll do that thing where he looks at the camera and subtitles just appear while he's cooking all of this food in dead silence, but he's doing all these like wacky amateur teppanyaki tricks and calling it like secret spice application technique. And then the best part is he'll have guests on it. By guests, I mean usually just people that he's into band with or else some girl that's modeled his clothes and they'll be sitting over here eating like, oh yeah, that's really good, I like this stuff. And then he's over in the other corner of the room fucking JoJo posing. And the subtitles are like, thanks bro, I'm glad you liked it. Okay, that's good stuff, I like that, it's my new favorite thing. But I feel like this in microcosm really explains a lot of this man's idiosyncratic approach to music and life in general. So he started out in one of the biggest, if not the biggest visual K bands of all time, Malice Miser. Like he was in the band even before Gact was, and he was there the whole way through despite other lineup changes. Early on, Malice Miser sounded like this. You have this really strong twin guitar harmonized attack of Cozy and Mana, almost like Thin Lizzy covering a Joy Division song or something. And it's pretty darn unique sounding. And then you have Tetsu or Gact or Klaha, in this case Gact, whoever happened to be the vocalist at the time, doing this very gothic crooning over a really nice bed of like wacky guitar effects, lots of synthesizers, really avant-garde song structures with lots of twists and turns. It's not really metal at all, but it's fucking fascinating music. But then something happened. Right around the time that Gact was moving more to just kind of being like a solo artist, so he's not doing anything with the band anymore, the drummer, Kami, died of a subarachnoid hemorrhage, which was very sad and 
really impacted the band greatly. And you can tell this on their final album because there's a pretty massive style change from that sort of like very colorful, dark, but sort of still fun loving kind of goth music to, well, this sort of very heavily keyboard driven neoclassical dark wave with a lot of influences from like contrapuntal Baroque music, old classical music, funeral masses, that kind of thing. A whole lot of these like layered choirs, not a whole lot of vocal presence most of the time, and the songs tend to be like very long form, which is highly unusual for like, you know, what essentially was a J-pop band. But it's damn good stuff if you're into this kind of style. Coming at things from a metalhead perspective, you'll probably enjoy this a lot if you're into some of the darker summoning side projects, or maybe like 80s Dead Can Dance. But yeah, there's like a full orchestra here, and you can hear them fading in. The guitars, when they do show up on this album, which isn't that often, a lot much closer to like sort of like a gothic heavy metal sound. It reminds me quite a bit of a much darker counterpart to the fourth X Japan album, Art of Life, which is one big long song with a whole lot of keyboards and like these very gothic neoclassical styled harmonized guitars all over the place. So if that sounds like your thing, check it out because it's a really fucking good album. But after that, Malice Miser kind of dissolves and the band members go their respective ways. And that is where we get to Manasama's solo project. He writes all the music for it. Moi de moi. And what this band is, is essentially the sound of him going full on with all of like the metal influences that were showing up in Malice Miser all through the years. And much like Malice Miser, you can kind of divide Moi de moi's career into sort of like two different phases. And it seems like, at least amongst the more metallically oriented of Moi de moi's fan base, that that second phase of Moi de moi's career is like held in much higher regard than the early early Moi de Moi albums. However, look, I've heard four Moi de Moi albums. I own two of them, and uh, I've enjoyed pretty much everything they've ever done. Unless there's like a real stinker of like a single or an EP that's hiding back there that I haven't just heard yet. I don't know, it all seems pretty great to me. So the first era is defined by the fact that it has a vocalist named Juka, and the music is very dark and keyboard heavy. So definitely a continuation of the later Malice Miser works in that regard. It also has sort of like this constantly flowing aggression to it. A lot of times you could almost like drop black metal vocals in on this and it wouldn't sound that out of place. Oh God, not that fucking guy though. But see, they actually do include some very subtle kind of background harsh vocals. But the main focus is on the heaviness of the guitars rather than the melodies the guitars are playing. The main melody comes in through the keyboards and then the vocals when we get to them. There's also a lot of cool full stop transitions. So here's Juka on vocals. He has a very dark voice in keeping with the dark overall character of this music. The main focus is on these like very brooding compositions that just kind of keep flowing out at you. That's what I mean when it's kind of black metal in a way. Obviously the vocals aren't fucking black metal, but the music has like a very similar vibe to it to a lot of like 90s symphonic black metal stuff, at least for me. I mean, hell, even like the first album cover looks like a fucking Cradle of Filth album. But it's not like all this sort of like flowing symphonic stuff. There are a few songs, however rarely this happens, on the early Moi de Moi albums that kind of mix shit up a little bit and point to what would become the second era of the band. You got songs like Temptation on the first album that show off some more Malice Miser type stuff with these like very long drawn out intros with a lot of sound effects and shit leading into some very dark and elegant gothic piano work with stirring string accompaniment very out of the ordinary even compared to that weird almost kind of black metal shit they were doing and it eventually does get metal but it keeps the same sort of like orchestral feel to it and actually what this song reminds me of in particular especially parts like that may in fact surprise you those of you who have gotten heavily into more underground Japanese black metal might recognize this. It's not actually another Moi de Moi song, though it sounds like it. In fact, this is the song Zombie Terror. Off of the second Psy album. But I don't know, man. I'm not saying that this influenced Moi de Moi at all. I'm just saying interesting convergent evolution. Because this sounds pretty darn similar to what we were hearing in that Moi de Moi song back there, apart from the very harsh vocals. 
You see what I mean? We're back in that Wadamaw song. And honestly, you could insert this into that Psy song or vice versa. And I don't know how many people would bat an eye. At least until the vocals showed up. But the composition is interesting with these flowing melodic parts that then run headlong in to these like very weird orchestrated parts with all the piano and shit. Interesting stuff, man. In the transition into these like weird almost kind of danceable beats with him crooning over it and like the heavy piano prevents the guitars have dropped out entirely for this part but don't worry it's gonna get more black metal in a second right there baby but you hear that that's like sort of almost like a d beat like punk beat thing on the drums right there that's pretty interesting stuff too and that will become important for the second era of wa de moi i see this song as sort of a precursor for what wa de moi would do on their third and fourth albums wherein they changed the lineup pretty much entirely juca left and a new guy named seth came in on vocals and wa de moi like pretty much reinvented his songwriting style to something a lot more dynamic and heavy for instance my personal favorite wa de moi song a track entitled metaphysical off of their third album design do. Remember this melodic intro guitar riff because it's going to come back later in a big way, I promise. And here's a very heavy transition riff into what will become the main riff set of the song, which shows off the much heavier De Xanadu style. Punk beats, Paul Muta guitar riffs, what the hell is this, man? Because I'll tell you what that riff reminds me of. You can call me crazy, this might even be a bigger stretch than Psy, but as soon as I heard that part, it totally made me think of fucking goddamn Entomb. You know, the fucking punk drum beats, the palm music guitar riffs. Hell yeah, brother. We're gonna do that. <laughs> but with spooky keyboards and in a gothic visual K band. And I fucking love it. This is some great hard hitting heavy metal type stuff. There's a lot more harsh vocals this time around with the new guy, which makes sense because this music looks more to like death metal than it does to that sort of gothic symphonic black metal stuff, at least compared to earlier Moi de Moi stuff. I mean, there's still plenty of spooky gothic shit, lots of whispered vocals, and weird floaty keyboards. But hey guys, you remember that part I said to pay attention to earlier? Yo, get that back! And with that magnificent resurgence, we see the actual purpose of that initial melodic riff because it provided sort of like a bed for them to put these more sort of almost power metal -y kind of gothic vocals. It sounds a lot like Versailles right here, but it was cool. They had that riff at the beginning of the song that sort of predicted where the song would go later on into this more gothic power metal direction. I don't know. These songs have a whole lot of twists and turns, even more than earlier Moi de Moi, which was no slouch in that department, and I fucking love it. They also started doing a lot more weird genre bending stuff. He's bringing a lot more electronic influence on some songs. And in a way, this actually looks back to an aspect of later Malice Miser that was somewhat neglected by the earlier Moi de Moi albums, that being the sort of neoclassical dark wave thing. I really like the odd, like, tuned percussion here. It has a much more cold aspect to it than the hotter death metal type stuff they do on other tracks. That was that for a weird transition. And we got like the synth vocals and everything. That's fucking weird. But it works because they're doing this kind of thing now and it actually fits in well with the death metal. They kind of go back and forth between these two styles and both of them are sort of knitted together by this more like gothic power metal type stuff. The vocals right there. It's all very soulful music even when it's at its most synthetic and industrial like it is on this song. Entitled Exclude again off of the third album De Xanadu. And when you get to the fourth Wild and Wild and they start to get even weirder. My boy Manasama would be making Bal Sagoth pretty damn proud with this wonderfully bombastic orchestral guitar intro. These guys get noticeably heavier with every album, but don't you worry because there's plenty of gothic harpsichord type stuff with cool choir vocals. It's still wanted wah. Check this out though, Blast Beast. Honest to God, Blast Beast on my fucking Visual K album. And they are alternated very nicely with these like heavily groove influence sections with the punk drum beat. Back into blast beats. So there's a lot of black metal and a lot of death metal going on in this visual K band. I also like this sort of weird mix of like the shouty bits with his like very harsh crooning singing voice. And the more clean vocals that are over a blast beat. That's some wacky stuff. Really dig this Seth Sky's vocals, especially when he starts layering them like that into some effective utilization and negative space with these like drum hits punctuating the bass fills. 
and the spooky keyboard. My boy just yelled thrash before a harpsichord section leading into this total visual K masterpiece, all right? You're not gonna hear that kind of stuff from any band but Moi de Moi. And that's why I love this band, because it is goddamn unique. Moi de Moi is one of the most unique sounding bands out there, and it's all because the guy that writes all the music, Manasama, is one of the most unique individuals I have ever come across in the musical world. And I gotta think, all that wacky stuff he does from not talking in interviews and just like miming shit or whispering in somebody else's ear and then they reply from him, to the really goofy like cooking videos he does. He's got a sense of humor to go along with all of the wacky affectations to the fact that he specifically has stated that he shuns formal music education like the plague, despite how all like neoclassical all this stuff sounds. You take all that, you put it in one guy, you have him write some metal and it comes out sounding like moi de moi and that means it sounds great. Tune in next week. We're probably gonna go back to death metal stuff. Thanks for watching folks. <laughs> We live in an imperfect physical universe. The software can't handle all the idiosyncrasies. Electrons move through reality. Electrons. 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 Electrons.